What exactly is a director loan? A loan to director or an overdrawn director loan account? The terminology can get quite confusing with a director loan account. So in this video, we will cover what exactly is a director loan account and some commonly used terminology, how much can a director borrow or lend between them and their company, how does the accounting work for a director loan account, what taxes are potentially payable on a director loan account, either through borrowing or lending, and the recommended paperwork for a direct loan account. Before I get into today's video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to make sure you're kept up to date with all of our latest content. This really helps us to produce more helpful videos and to get you free quality advice from real qualified accountants. According to HMRC, a director's loan is when you as a director get money from your company that is not a salary dividend or expense repayment, or money you've previously paid into or loaned the company. Just to add another layer to this definition, a director loan account can take one of two forms. That is either money you as a director borrow from your company, and will refer to this as an overdrawn director loan account, or you as a director lend in your company money, and will refer to this as a loan from director. Since October 2007, there is no limit as to how much you can borrow or lend to your company through a director loan account. However, with regards to an overdrawn director loan, in reality, you can only really borrow as much as your company can reasonably afford to lend you and has liquid cash to do so. It may be stating the obvious, but if your company has, say, £20,000 in liquid cash in its bank account at a point in time, then you cannot really borrow any more than this at that point in time. Furthermore, you need to be careful because your company will need a proportion of liquid funds for working capital, in other words, everyday expenses and costs, and taxes that it is liable for. From a tax perspective, there are two key thresholds here. The overdrawn director loans of up to £10,000 and overdrawn director loans of more than £10,000. We'll go into detail on these later in this video. Starting with an overdrawn director loan account, the accounting entries in your company would be as follows. Debit director loan account, in other words, debtor. This means your company is owed this money at a point in time, so it's recognized on the balance sheet as an asset. And credit, bank or cash. This means the liquid funds have left your business bank account and have been paid across to you, the director, into your personal account. When it comes to a loan from director, the entries are literally reversed and the director loan account becomes a creditor account. So in other words, your company has this liability to pay you the director who becomes a creditor. The good news is that if you borrow £10,000 or less from your company, there is no benefit in kind charge or interest to pay to your company. In other words, it's an interest-free loan with a time limit. You will have to repay this loan nine months after the end of your company year. Otherwise, your company will be subject to what is known as the Section 455 tax charge at 32.5% of the outstanding loan amount. So for example, if your company year end is the 31st of March and you took a £9,000 loan on the 6th of January earlier in the same year, you will have until the 31st of December in the same year to repay the loan or your company will be faced with a £2,925 Section 455 charge. That's 32.5% of the £9,000 loan. A Section 455 tax charge is a temporary withholding tax, and the good news is it is refundable should the loan be repaid at some point in the future. There is an indefinite time limit to repay the loan back, providing your company remains active and solvent, and once you do repay the loan, your company will have four years to reclaim the Section 455 tax charge paid. If you borrow an amount in excess of £10,000, whether in one go or cumulatively, then the situation changes. In order to avoid paying a benefit in kind charge, you will have to pay interest at the HMRC official rate. Click on the link in the description below to head to HMRC's official interest rates. So for example, you've borrowed £20,000 on the 6th of January. HMRC's official rate of interest is 2.5%, so you pay £500 per year in interest directly to your company. This income is subject to corporation tax. If you don't pay interest at the official rate or below the official rate, the benefit in kind charge, assuming you are a higher rate taxpayer, will be £200. Plus your company will have to pay Class 1A national insurance 
at 13.8%, amounting to £69 for the year. And what's more, it's strongly advisable you draw a formal loan agreement if you do opt to pay interest to your company, as opposed to taking a benefit in kind charge personally. If your company has received a loan from you, the director, then there is no tax implication to either yourself or your company. Unless, of course, you decide to charge your company a rate of interest on the loan, which you are well within your rights to do so. But it must be a commercially viable rate, quite often an equivalent market rate for a company loan from a third-party lender. For you personally, you will have to declare the interest you earn on your self-assessment return, and yes, this is taxable on you personally. For your company, the interest paid is classified as a business expense and gets full corporation tax relief. With a director loan account or director loans, whether it's borrowing or lending, it is important to get the transactions and paperwork right to avoid any issues or complications further down the line. We put together a free templated director loan agreement and some guidelines on the paperwork you will need for a director loan to get you started. Click on the link below to head to our site and download it. So in part two of our director loan account series, we're going to address the following questions. Given the section 455 tax charge, why would you even want to take an overdrawn director loan and some of the benefits of doing so? What are the benefits of lending your company money as a loan from director? What if you don't or never repay an overdrawn director loan? And something called bed and breakfasting and the anti-avoidance measures for when you repay a loan to avoid the section 455 tax charge and simply borrow the money back again soon after. So click on the bell notification icon to make sure you get notified when we release this video very soon. I hope this video has helped you understand some of the basics of a direct to loan account in a bit more detail and taking you one step closer to knowing your numbers. As always, let me know in the comments your thoughts on today's video or if there are any topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Finally, be sure to like and subscribe as this really does help us to get our content out there. This is Tony Daniel for the Accounting and Tax Academy. Thanks for tuning in.